Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand facts and information about your favorite pop culture icons, video games, movies, and comic books. Today, we're going to be doing a classic Spider-Man storyline. You see, Spider-Man originally got the black suit during the Secret War event, way back in like the 1980s, early 90s. I, I don't have the time frame exact on my head. Anyway, the storyline then picked up where he came back to New York, and the first issue and that is the issue we're going to cover today. Just a classic glimpse into an old school Spider-Man storyline. So today we're going to be covering the black suit originally arriving in New York. Okay, that's what's going to be happening. And if you like it, let me know in the comments down below. But this episode is also brought to you by one of my favorite app games, Marvel Puzzle Quest. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that at the end of the episode. As the first print of the Daily Bugle with the headline, Where Are They? Still no word on the missing heroes is placed on J. Jonah Jameson's desk. Robbie asks, What do you think? Jonah tells him, Not bad. Headline is good, a real grabber. But this photo with all the heroes in it is too artsy. Our readers want to concentrate on a single visual instead of being dazzled with special effects. Jonah then opens up the full story to read and then he stops asking, Why isn't there more photos? Where are the photos from Peter Parker? Robbie says he tried to call him, but he seems to be out of town. And Jonah shouts, That's the trouble with freelancers! They're undependable! They're always around except for the time when you really need them. This is good, but there's one thing about it. There's not a word in here questioning Spider-Man's involvement! Is he the one behind the disappearances? What does he have to gain? Meanwhile, in the sheep meadow of New York Central Park, the police have blocked off an area where the heroes were last seen. A mysterious Stonehenge-like construct was seen there, but as the heroes gathered inside of it, it took them to a far-off galaxy. For those who are wondering, that is the original 1980s Secret Wars. Suddenly, while the police continue their investigation, a blinding light explodes from the exact same spot where the heroes disappeared. The same mysterious construction has reappeared, and as the doors open, Peter Parker, now wearing a black suit, jumps out holding Dr. Kurt Connors. As the two land, he shouts, We did it! We really got through! Peter looks at one of the men in the park holding a thermos, stating that he's gonna need a sip at that. They've been traveling for a long time. The man nervously holds out the thermos, and Peter snatches it, pouring Dr. Connors a drink. While Doc Connors drinks, Spider-Man looks around, stating, Wait, we're really home! Yahoo! He jumps around the park, bouncing off the police cars, and as he lands, one of the officers asks, Who are you? Spider-Man tells him, Me? I'm Spider-Man! I'm glad to know you. He tries to give the officer a kiss on the nose, but the other officer reaches for his gun, shouting to cut the comedy act, wise guy! We've seen Spider-Man, and you ain't him! As the officer pulls his gun out, Peter webs it up, telling him, I don't want that to accidentally go off and hurt someone. Seconds later, there's another light that shines on the mysterious device, and with it, the rest of the Avengers walk out. As everyone runs over, asking what is going on, Spider-Man pulls Doc Connors away, telling them, Quick, we have to get out of here before the Shutterbugs start taking pictures. He jumps up into the trees with Doc Connors, and he asks, Aren't you going to tell everyone what just happened? And Spider-Man tells him, I've been wanting to talk about that. Reed Richards suggested that we keep things quiet for now. With everything that's been going on, that sounds like a good idea. Besides, no one's gonna believe our story about meeting the Beyonder anyway. As Peter lands on a branch, he starts to look around and shouts, Oh no, I hid my clothes here, but the web ball must have evaporated and the birds used it as a nest. At least my wallet and keys are still here. Guess it's time to see if this new costume works like it did back on the other planet. With that, the costume reacts to Peter's thought and it opens up creating a pocket for Peter to place his things. As the scene closes up, he thinks, wow, I am never going to get used to this. Once they're ready, he swings through New York, dropping off Doc Connors in his apartment with his family, and then he heads over to his own apartment to change his clothes. As he jumps down into the skylight and walks into his bathroom, the suit again reacts to his thoughts, converting itself into civilian clothing. Peter stops in awe, asking, I am really going to need Reed to take a look and analyze this thing. And my face? It hasn't seen a razor for days. Wait, days? Oh my god, I have to call Aunt May. She must be worried sick. He calls his aunt up and he sits down telling her that he's sorry that she hasn't heard from him in a bit. He just had an unexpected photo assignment out of town. She tells him it's alright, she's just glad to hear that he's safe and back home. He should come over Sunday for dinner. Peter laughs telling her, only if I can bring dessert. Alright, I'll see you then. As he hangs up, he thinks that he needs to make one more call to his old lady, Felicia Hardy. He calls, but Felicia doesn't answer. And he hangs up thinking, man, we have some real serious talks to have too. It's time we straighten out this wacky relationship of ours. He grabs his jacket and he heads out, stating that he's back. It's time to sit down and chow down on some good food. Once he leaves from that same skylight, a shadowy silhouette makes her way down into the bathroom. And she calls out for Spider-Man. When he doesn't answer, Felicia looks around, thinking that she needs to find him. She has some real problems here. She wanted to be the perfect partner for her spider. So she lets some science boys conduct some experiments on her. They managed to release or enhance some pretty funky latent powers. And then she found out that those guys were one of Spider-Man's greatest enemies, the kingpin of crime. 
After grabbing his mail, Peter heads out reading the news, thinking that he needs to come up with some money fast. Ren's almost due. Just then, Peter's camera pops out of his costume and he shouts, That's it! The costume knew that I wanted this! Gosh, I can develop this film of that alien adventure and make a fortune in the news magazines! As he starts to hang up the photos, he thinks about it, and then he crushes them, thinking, Who am I trying to kid? No one's gonna think that these are real! They're gonna say they're fake! Plus, readers write, We shouldn't burden the public with what happened to us out there. It's time to destroy these pictures and the negatives before bed. A few moments later, he yawns, thinking that it's about it for one day. Time to crash. However, sleep refuses to come, and for over an hour, Peter tosses and turns, trying to sleep. He leans back up, thinking that it's no use. There's too many things swirling around. He may never sleep again! He's gotta get out there and do some web-slinging and... But just before he can do anything else, the costume responds again, and it slithers its way to his desk and onto him. He looks at himself and thinks, well, I'm ready to get back out there then. He swings around the city, telling himself, yep, this is exactly what I needed. And just then, he spots a mugger trying to rob a man on the streets. The mugger grabs the man, shouting, Give me your wallet, Mac! And just as the man lifts the briefcase to try and hit the mugger, the mugger notices Peter hanging right behind the man. The mugger turns and screams as he runs away, but as the man turns back, Peter tells him that he's safe now. But he might not want to walk around this late at night alone. The man stares for a moment and then turns and runs away screaming as well. Peter swings off, stating that it must be the new costume, but he's feeling too good to worry about that. He continues his patrol until he suddenly hears a couple fighting down one of the alleyways. The man, Justin, yells to his girlfriend, Wheezy, to just shut up already. If she won't close her mouth, then he will. Peter swings down, grabbing the two of them, separating them, stating, Slow down, champ. Didn't your mother ever tell you that a gentleman don't slug a woman? What are you fighting about anyway? Wheezy then says that it's all Justin's fault. He promised to take her to a concert tonight and then backed out at the last minute. It was their favorite group too, Burnt Toast. Justin shouts that it isn't his fault that they sold out. Besides, that group is pretty lame anyway. As the group gets back into it, Peter yells that that is enough. Take a breather, kids. It's stupid of you to be fighting when you have so much going for you. Justin asks, oh yeah? Like what? Take a look at the neighborhood, mister. We live here and it stinks. We got nothing going for us. Peter grabs the two of them by the arms, throwing them over his shoulder, stating, Normally, I debate with my fists, but today I'm going to try something different. He swings back with both Justin and Wheezy, landing on a building, showing the two of them that he wants them to get a bird's eye view of their city. Feel that cold night air. Doesn't it make you glad to be alive? Justin scoots back to the ledge, stating that, If he says so, can we go now? And Wheezy tells him, Not yet. She's really taking in the view. Peter points around to the different people going about their lives, stating that there are some rough patches, but compared to them, some people have it way worse. This city is like a living creature. It has potential for incredible good and horrible evil. Whether you like it or not, this city is a part of us, just like we're a part of it. A short while later, Peter drops the two of them back off, and Wheezy says thanks for the ride. She knows Justin hated it, but she had a great time. You know something? You're a real nice guy, but you're awfully weird. Peter says that he guesses he is, weirder than some, but not as weird as others. Wheezy begins to follow Justin as he runs off, stating, if that's the case, I don't want to meet the others. Peter swings off, telling himself that he's not sure if what he did was good for them or himself. But now he feels even better than ever. New York, you really know how to bring out the very best in your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I do anything for love, but I won't wear a black suit that turns out to be an alien symbiote and wants to control my brain. That's right, Venom may love you, but you don't love Venom back. That's how it should be. That's how things need to be in the Marvel Universe. And if you want more of the classic black Spider-Man suit storyline, let me know in the comments down below and give this video a like. But don't forget, today's episode is brought to you by Marvel Puzzle Quest. And now I'm going to tell you a little more about that. Marvel Puzzle Quest is Marvel's own Match 3 puzzle RPG experience available on your mobile phone. I know a lot of you guys play those kinds of games, and of course I do as well. We all know that I play a ton of app games. The game is free on top of everything else, and it includes over 150 characters. For me, I like characters like Ghost Rider, Iron Man, and the multiple versions of Spider-Man. Luckily for me, Spider-Man has all of the same Match 3 colors that he brings into the battle, but still, I, it's Spider-Man! I can use all the different versions of them if I want to. If you play the game, you can compete in PvP content and even story events or join alliances for more competitiveness and more rewards. And guys, the main reason that they wanted me to tell you about this game again, because you know we've done it before, is because they're having an anniversary event. You get free in-game gifts, special sales, double ISO 8 rewards, you get new alliance-based events, Cable and Taskmaster have been added to the roster, and if new players join right now and use our link, you'll get Venom, Eddie Brock version, for free when you join Marvel Puzzle Quest. That's right, use our link and you will get Venom for free. The only thing that you have to do is go to d3go.com slash complete story. 
Or you can go to d3go.com slash C-O-M-P-L-E-T-E-S-T-O-R-Y. Or just click the link down below, guys. Make sure that you use the links because that's how you get Venom for free. And there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed all of this. Don't forget to click our link down below. And if you go and do our sponsor, Marvel Puzzle Quest, well, that helps us out. So if you want to support us, support us by going to an obvious awesome tie-in. Okay, come on. It's, It's Marvel. It's Marvel Puzzle Quest. I like Marvels. Marvel games are fun. I'll see you later.